Hola, hola. My name is Ramon, cosmetic chemist, esthetician, lover of Korean sunscreens, lover of highly anticipated sunscreen launches. We've had a lot of them this year, and today's no exception. You can see it in the title. Today, we're talking about the newly relaunched Crave Beauty Beat the Sun. I have been testing this for a while. I'm actually filming this. It's early February. This launch is February 23rd. I got this a few weeks back, so I have been testing this out for a few weeks now, pre-launch. So with that being said, full disclosure, I do have a personal relationship with Leah and Crave, and I did get this product in P. Are. That being said, I'm going to be as objective as possible in this review, considering that you're going to see the application footage. That's not going to lie to you. And I have a lot of thoughts about this launch, considering how excited I was about it. So being a chemical sunscreen, I'll be using my 6F testing rubric, where we'll talk about the feel, finish, formulations, filter, foundation wear, and fragrance. And I'll have timestamps for all that down below, so you can fast forward to whatever part of the video you're most interested in. For the application footage, as with all my sunscreen reviews, I'm going to be using my little scale, as well as my little quarter teaspoon to weigh out and make sure I'm I'm applying the adequate amount of sunscreen for the size of my face. If you want to know how much sunscreen you should be applying, I'll have a video up here in the card. And with that, let's get into it. So first things first, let's get into the marketing of this. This was the brief that was sent to the people that got this PR. So the slogan is Gentle Shield, Giant Power. It's a lightweight, barely there sunscreen that combines UV and antioxidant properties harnessed from supercharged beetroot extract. This fragrance-free formula quickly absorbs into skin and leaves nothing. No greasiness or white cast, but radiant, velvety, soft skin. This is SPF 40, PA3+. No white cast, no pilling. That's what they're advertising. And this is going to be retailing for $20 for 50 mil. So let's start with the first F. Let's start with the feel. As you can see, when it comes out of the tube, this is a lightweight gel. I'm going to be really honest. I cannot remember what the original Beat the Sun feels like. Also, I mean, I guess that you're this part of the video if you're watching. Kind of a precursor to this. Unfortunately, the original Beat the Shield was a victim to the Sunscreen Gate 2020 situation. They pulled this from the shelves. And obviously, it's been a few years now of strategizing product development and now here we are at the launch. So that's why this is a relaunch of the sunscreen. I can't remember what the original version of this felt like. I'll have a card for the original video review I did up here if you want to go see that. But if I remember correctly to me, that one was a little bit more milky, drippy. This is more light gel cream texture, very light lotion texture. But it works in really, really easily as you can see in the application footage. I have no issue of really having to work it into my skin. I don't feel it is very, very messy. The feel of it though, they say it's not greasy. I'm going to agree with that to a certain extent. It's not greasy. There is is a little bit of emollients to it, but it's by no means Black Girl Sunscreen SPF 30, but it's a sunscreen. And I'll talk about this more when you get to the filters part, but it's by no means like a powdery finish, matte finish either. And so when you get to the finish, it's radiant, it's glowy. And they say in the marketing, it's a radiant, but velvety soft on the skin. And I agree and disagree to a certain extent. There is a glow to the skin. There's a luminosity to the skin. That is very objective. This is by no means matte. They don't advertise it as being matte. I don't personally find this to be greasy, but a few of us have spoken as we've reviewed this and we're like, oh, this is very surprising. This is not what we were anticipating Crave launching. This is definitely more glowy than the original Beat the Sun. That being said, I don't think this is greasy personally, but this does have a moisturizing texture on the skin. So having oily skin, I would skip moisturizer. This is my moisturizer, but it has a nice moisturizing, hydrating quality to it. So it does feel like a gel cream moisturizer on the skin. But leading to the filter, so the reason that it does have a texture and feel is Crave went the American sunscreen route. So the filters in this are homosalate, octosalate, avobenzone, and octocrylene to give you that SPF 40 PA3+. And that was another part where I was like very like, huh, SPF 40 PA3+, not 4+. I feel like that was another big, like that is not what I was anticipating from them. And so if you don't follow me on TikTok, which go follow me, and on Instagram, go follow me. I did a video recently kind of explaining why it's really hard to make a matte sunscreen. And part of that just being due to UV filters are solubilized in emollients or oils. Very, very few are actually water soluble. And so as a result of that, if you want to achieve a broad spectrum, high protection sunscreen, oils and emollients are going to have to be involved to some capacity. And we know this for sure, for sure, especially with American UV filters like homosalate, octocrylene, octosalate, they're oily substances in themselves. And especially homosalates at 10%, that's the max value we see it in the US for a UVB protection. And having that much of a formulation be a very oily substance, it's going to lend itself to a specific texture and finish on the skin. Like, I'm sorry, that's how it is. And I haven't talked to Leah about this. I actually have not gone into detail with her about about this. If you want to see a video of me actually talking to her and asking some questions, let me know. But here's the deal. Considering what happened with the controversy before and what the expectations for them were with this launch, going that US filter route so that it could be registered as a drug in the US and be recognized to be sold freely and openly in the US, and thus having to use these specific filters, wanting to create as elegant of a formula as possible while still achieving really good protection, that's where I'm like, okay, that SPF 30 PA3 plus kind of makes sense to me. Kind of. But yeah, I know people are going to be like, it's only SPF 
SPF 40 PA3+. This is a daily wear sunscreen. Nowhere was she trying to revolutionize the world and make this like three hour water and sweat resistant sunscreen. This is a daily wear sunscreen. There's a huge difference in like time and place for each one, like a daily wear versus a water resistant sunscreen. So this is intended to be a daily wear sunscreen with that kind of protection. Like a commute to and from work kind of situation, reapplies you need throughout the day, not standing out in the sun for four hours kind of sunscreen. But that being said, with the specific UV filters that are in this, there is no chance for a white cast. There's nothing in this sunscreen formula either that's going to contribute to a white cast like silica or anything. Therefore, this is deep skin friendly. Julian, aka Scamando14, and my friend Esther Olu at the Melanin Chemist on Instagram, they both tried this, no white cast issues on them. And then in terms of formulation, again, this is called Beat the Sun because of beetroot. We love a clever name. Beetroot is a really antioxidant rich extract. It also has some nice moisturizing properties to it. Aside from that, this also has hyaluronic acid and vitamin E, so further antioxidant protection. Bisabolol and willow herb extract. This is alcohol and fragrance free. This smells lightly like sunscreen, lightly like sunscreen. So it doesn't have a perfume. It doesn't have much of a scent. There's something a little bit sweet about the smell though. It's like sunscreen with a little sweetness to it, but I don't mind it. I feel like the smell dissipates very, very quickly. And then because I'm going to get asked questions, I sting. So here's the deal. This is a American sunscreen. So you're going to have those American UV filters. And one of the most common feedbacks I've heard from the other creators who've gotten this is that aside from the fact that this is a radiant finish, for some people, this really did sting their eyes, especially if this gets in your eyes. I have this issue with really oily sunscreens because I have really oily eyelids where the sunscreen just runs into my eyes and then I just, I'm like left incapacitated. Like I can't open my eyes, I'm like crying. I haven't had that experience with this personally, but because of everyone else's experience, I was very cautious around my eye area. So I haven't had this, but just be wary. If you have sensitivity to American UV filters, this will have the potential to sting your eyes. So then foundation wear, I think this is gorgeous under foundation. I have, and I always talk about this on my channel, I love a glowy sunscreen. So like something that's radiant on the skin underneath a matte foundation base because the two just kind of like find this nice balance and giving you a really nice natural skin glow. That's great for oily skin. So I love this for under makeup. I have no issues with it pilling when I apply makeup. It doesn't affect the way my makeup looks or lasts throughout the day. It's a radiant sunscreen. I do have to blot and powder throughout the day, but I have oily skin. I will have to do that with any kind of sunscreen. And then the last F is fragrance. As I mentioned earlier, there's no fragrance or essential oils in this. This smells like sunscreen mixed with a little something sweet up in there, but I don't know what that exactly is. But yeah, so fragrance free. And therefore if you have fragrance sensitivity, I think you should be fine in that regard. So overall, what are my thoughts on the relaunch of Beat the Shield from Crave Beauty? Objectively, I think it's a good sunscreen. I kind of missed the old formula, but we all know what happened there. And this wasn't exactly what I was anticipating for the launch. But if you like a nice daily wear sunscreen that leaves your skin glowy, this is a good option for you. I'd recommend this more for normal to dry skin types. If you're oily, just do be weary. This is going to be glowy. You know the Pareto daily go-to sunscreen, how, that, how glowy that leaves the skin? Very similar finish in my mind. When I have dry skin because of Tret or here in Germany right now with freezing, this is something I like to use, but I do have to powder afterwards. I would not reach for this in very humid, very, very hot climates just because it is very radiant. So this is not something I'd recommend for oily skin types unless you love a good radiant glow. But yeah, my main comments on this is just, I know people are going to question the filters in this. I explain why. People are going to talk about the finish of this. It is glowy. And people are going to talk about the SPF rating on this. It's a daily sunscreen. Like, I don't know what to tell you. So yeah, very interesting launch from Crave and Leah. Not what I was anticipating, but definitely not a bad sunscreen by any means. $20 for 50 mil. Run of the mill considering Crave is an independent brand. I've talked about what goes into developing formulas as an independent brand when it comes to sunscreen. It's very expensive. So $20 for 50 mil in my mind is not a bad price for a sunscreen, but I do understand it's not cheap, cheap. But also I know she does have some more sunscreen formulas up her sleeve. If you follow Leah on Instagram or if you follow Crave, she's always posting about behind the scenes look at what they're developing and what's down the pipeline. So I do know she has other SPF formulas down the line. I know one she's like very, very candid and transparent about is the mineral formula she's working on. So interested in seeing what that looks like. But let me know down below in the comments section. What are your thoughts on the Crave Beauty Beat the Shield relaunch? And what else would you want to see from Crave Beauty, especially in regards to a sunscreen? Sound off below in the comment section. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and notification bell so that you know when I post more skincare, sunscreen, and fancy related content on my channel. Give the video a thumbs up and thanks for watching guys. Bye.